So um, I guess just to kind of start off, I was looking into Art Bastard and everything, um, you know, that's going on with you and that's kind of been going on with you for a long time, Robert. And a lot of people give the soup cans they first think Andy Warhol, but you were actually painting soup cans before him, correct? That is correct. That is correct. And, um, and what kind of inspired you to do all that? Well, I was, you know, I was, I was uh, a, a young artist back in the, uh, in, in, in the 60s. And, uh, and you might want to know, uh, you know, a little bit about the, the can that I painted, which is right here. And um, apparently I made the wrong choice because I picked Heinz rather than Campbell's. <laughs> And, uh, but I want to tell you something personally and, and, and to your listeners that I still believe Heinz soup is better than Campbell's, especially the tomato. So that's important for me to. And then, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, soup is um, touchy. I mean, it really, it really is. People have, when it comes to food in general, I think people have really, you know, ideas that they're, the thing that they like the best is the best. That's right. That's right. And then why do you think it's taken so long um, for you to get, not necessarily recognized, because you've definitely been recognized, but to the level that you're at right now? Well, I, I think I entered the uh, art world and my career started uh, at a time when when things were changing in the art world in the sense that the promotion of art was becoming more important in, in some ways than the art itself. And I, my training was with, uh, uh, with George Gross, who was um, clearly a satirist and someone who painted what was around him, et cetera. He did it in Germany, I did it here. And <clears throat> for that reason, the, the way my, I, it was not about to be uh, painting for the marketplace. In other words, I didn't look for the isms that were coming in and saying, oh, maybe I should become, do abstract or be a minimalist or a uh, conceptual artist or something. So the kind of art that I ended up doing, it, there's a piece right here. Uh, this is called Le, Le Cirque, the, the uh, first generation. And this is a mural that I did for the, uh, for the restaurant with 191 recognizable patrons. And clearly, I think that's a, it takes a different kind of a skill to do that than to do the soup cans. Not that I, I've, uh, it's just that I think that I've broadened my, my scope of painting since that time. And that has been, for one reason or another, um, held me back, let's say, with recognition from the from the art establishment. However, I am the most widely written about unknown artist in America. So there are other areas where I where I have gotten some uh, recognition. Right, and then when I was looking at Art Bastard, the film kind of about your life, it's up for you know it's being considered at least for an Oscar, and on the website it's got so many awards that it's won. Um, what's it like to be discovered after 50 years, and how do you feel about your life being told in this type of film? Well, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a interesting experience because especially when you weren't uh, uh, thinking that this that you were going to be uh, dis you know, discovered in that way, and over the years, my many of my friends and even people in the art world said, "Well, Bob, don't worry." Don't worry, you're you know uh, you're going to be discovered after you're dead. You're going to be you know, and that wasn't uh, my idea. You know, my idea was to be discovered while I was alive, and luckily the film I believe is uh, helping me in that uh, in that direction. But I would suggest to other artists to try to get recognized while you're alive. Right. It's a much better feeling. And then so. Yes. <laughs> when the public is going to watch these films, and some of them already have, um, if I'm correct, it's been premiered at film festivals. Is that true? Oh, yeah. It's gone. It's been in uh, pretty much around the country. In, uh, and now it's going to be, I think, get on iTunes and Amazon. Um, and I guess it's, you know, there'll, there'll be other uh, venues to, to see it as well. Awesome. 
So when we're looking into this and, you know, we're going to learn about your work in the movie, talk about what some of your favorite pieces are and some of your favorite parts of the movie. What do you really want viewers to take away from you and your story? Well, uh, I think one of the main things that uh, I hope people uh, walk away with is, is the feeling that it's okay to criticize or to um, uh, what they see in a museum. In other words, just because something's in a museum doesn't mean it's good. And um, I think that comes across in the film. It comes across because we, it has a lot to do with the art world itself. And, and the art world, I think, could be, um, you know, might, maybe it should be regulated just the way the uh, stock market is uh, regulated because there's a lot of um, things that go on about price fixing and uh, who's in, who's out, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's one aspect of it. Uh, there's a lot of humor. I, I, I deal with, with subjects that, that uh, like being illegitimate is not necessarily a uh, humorous subject, but I think I, I do it with humor. And they see that I'm a bastard as a uh, real person, as I was born out of wedlock. And I'm also a bastard in the art world because I don't follow the rules that they would want you to, uh, I, don't, I don't paint for the marketplace and I will, not, I have not uh, compromised my art. And after 50 years, I could have either thought I was stupid, but <laughs> now that the film's out, I feel pretty, uh, I feel like it's a vindication uh, to doing, you know, to following your, your um, what, what, what you think is right. Yeah, and then a lot of people, I think, today at least when I do these interviews and I kind of study pop culture and young adults, people are more apt to kind of follow themselves a little bit more truly, I think. Um, you know, not so much by mainstream and, and everything like that. I think people are kind of discovering that their voices do matter, even if they're not getting necessarily a large audience at first. So I kind of feel like your story is something that people can look up to, even if they're doing art or writing or music and kind of see, you know, you can stay true to yourself and you don't have to kind of conform necessarily. And, you know, it'll work out in your favor in one way or another. Right. I, ab absolutely. I mean, the, the uh, reaction I get from the film is not just from artists and so on, but people who, who have, you know, who want to do what they feel is right. And they come up to the, these roadblocks in society that, uh, you know, uh, force you into areas that, that you don't want to go into. Now, my students, I teach at the Art Students League in New York, and I have a lot of uh, talented students, and the hardest thing is is to tell them, um, don't give up your day job, because the likelihood in this society, there's number, number one, the uh, being an artist is not, you know, necessarily the thing you're parents tell you to go into, they say, oh, you know, you're, you're going to starve and you won't be known until you're dead or something. So that, that's like, like an old tale. But the truth is, is that I, I do say, don't give up your day job, but don't, but don't compromise on your art either. So if you're going to be an artist, just don't compromise because otherwise go do something else. So if you have to do the art on the side, then that, that's my uh, suggestion to people because in the end, you'll always have your art and you'll, uh, there, there's nothing, nothing more meaningful than to look at something that you are uh, ha happy with and, and proud of. And that's why I'm an artist. And uh, having the film has vindicated a lot of, uh, a lot of that for me. Yeah, I think that's incredible. And then you are the leading artist, actually, in focusing on satire and social commentary in your work. I know we've talked a little bit about it with some of my earlier questions, but why is that so important to you? Well, it's important because um, the the history, you know, when you think of what art is about, it's uh, it's it's sort of, it's chronicling the the period that you that you're living in. That's if we didn't have uh, Bruegel, you know, we wouldn't know really what 
uh, you know, what was going on at that time, or Bosch, or um, my teacher, George Gross, uh, who, who um, you know, was thrown out of Berlin by Hitler because he attacked, he, he, he uh, painted the world, the, the, you know, he, he predicted what was gonna happen with Hitler. And um, in my case, <laughs> I might predict what's gonna happen with, uh, <laughs> some, with some political figures also. Um, but if you are not painting what is around you and, and you're not painting actual, um, you know, subject matter, uh, people, this, that kind of thing, uh, that cannot be um, recorded. Um, so a, 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 as an abstract painter, for instance, I could not have, I could not have done 191 um, um, figures, <laughs> recognizable figures in a, in a single canvas. So, right. um, you know, uh, so, so my reason is really that, that I, I want uh, the world in 100 years now to know what it was like to live during the period that I was, that I've been on this planet. Yeah, and then I was looking through your art gallery on your website, and you've got some pieces on here. Um, one of my favorites was, let me find it again here, like the Battlefield of Energy, and then you've got one about um, the Stock Odyssey. So when people start looking into Art Bastard and start looking into your name, what pieces would you want them to look at first that you think kind of sum up who you have been as an artist? Well, you, you picked out one already, which was uh, Battlefield of Energy, because I did that in, in 1979, um, and it was all about the oil crisis that didn't really exist. And I kind of show that, that the corporate world is actually fighting, is they are battling us, you know, the, the people. That's why you have a Coca-Cola tank, you have a Chaseman Hatton tank. I hope they're not sponsors of your program. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> and you have, you know, and there, there are armies of, of different, uh, you know, corporations and so on. And that's sort of where we are. Uh, a, a lot of people feel that way today, that, uh, that the corporations are, are running the show, let's say, and uh, um, I, I did that in, in the 70, uh, in 79, and now it's becoming of interest to people. Um, so art sometimes doesn't, uh, you know, it, it has a way of um, uh, coming to the forefront, uh, not exactly when you paint it, but at, at a later date. And of course it would be, with the film, all this will can be seen more easily uh, since they aren't showing it in the. But if you want to, if you want to see, uh, if you want to go to artbastard.com, you see you can get to see the trailer, and if you go to rcenadellagallery.com, uh, you can see all those uh, uh, pictures that you were talking about, um, including the crucified Santa Claus, which is I guess one of my favorite paintings. I saw that one too. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today, Robert. And then, um, do you have, because a lot of our people, like I said, are, are more young adults, do you have social media that you, are you on Twitter, Instagram, or anything like that? Or should we just check out your website for best information? No, all, I'm on all Twitter, uh, all those things. I, I'm not good about it myself, but, <laughs> but I know that I'm on, I know I have friends and I have, uh, uh, all, all those things, There's, uh, three or four of them I'm on, yeah, you can. Uh, and, all right, awesome. Yeah, and if you, if you want to well, be. Thank you again. <laughs> okay, it was, it, it was good talk. I'm sorry I'm, I'm a Luddite when it comes to these, uh, these new um, social media things, but I'm sure it's uh, Oh, trust me, you're not missing much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a good day. Okay, you too.